Now, here's your host, Paul Blair. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and welcome to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, one-third of the 1995 college football season is in the history books. This weekend, the Oklahoma State football team made the long trip to Laramie, Wyoming to take on the high-powered offense of the Wyoming Cowboys. And with us, of course, each and every week, the head coach of OSU Cowboy football, Bob Simmons. Coach, it's good to see you. Good to see you, Paul. Coach, we've heard so much this last week, especially about altitude. You spent seven seasons in Colorado, now making the trip up to uh, Wyoming. Is that fact or fiction, the thin air? Well, you know, as far as this, this game is concerned, I don't, I don't think it had anything to do with it. I think we wanted to get in and get out of the ball game. We took iron pills going into this ball game. Uh, I think if you, if you think about it and let it work on you, it could, it could be fact. But uh, uh, considering how we played, <laughs> whether it was facts <laughs> or fiction, we, we, we didn't play very well. Uh, you know, that first half we came out uh, uh, like a team that was very flat. Uh, uh, it was a ball game that really got started at, at 12 o'clock, which is the first time we played at 12, but we mm -hmm. talked to our team about that. Starting fast is really what we wanted to try to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, on both sides of the ball, we did not execute on either offense or defense, which is my disappointment. Well, that brings up mm -hmm. a, a good point. It seems like uh, there's been a common thread that's run through the first four, four games. Now, granted, we've got a, a, a young team. And I guess some of this is to be expected, but it seems like each game we play one good half of real solid good football on both sides. Yeah, yeah, we and do. And then one half we just kind of flop around to a certain extent. What can be done as a coaching staff? Well, to you know, that? the biggest thing that we got to the kids got to understand is it's a lack of discipline. Uh, I think our coaches are really doing the job, stressing the fundamentals and playing within the concept of our, of uh, what we're trying to teach on both sides of the ball. And now the kids are going to start to buy into it. Uh, we can't freelance. We cannot afford to freelance on defense uh, because you get out of position. And offense, offense is assignment football. There's a guy in front of you. You got to know who to block. Uh, there are certain holes you got to run. There are certain reads that you have to make, make as a quarterback. Uh, and when we get in a ball game like this here, where a team goes up on you 14 to nothing, uh, we talk about composure and talk about now let's 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 gather our thoughts and and, and stick with our offense and defense and game plan. And for the first half uh, of football in this particular ball game, we, did, we, we didn't handle it very well. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll be back to take a look at those highlights from Laramie, Wyoming, right after this break. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, with all the winter onslaught we've been getting recently, especially up in the Rocky Mountains, fortunately had a good break in the weather, about 50 degrees at kickoff, and right from the opening possession of the second half, Oklahoma State just seemed to be a new football team. Well, you know, we, we, uh, we, we had to take a gut check at halftime and really talk about what we were doing right and what we were doing wrong. Uh, and then we come out the second half and, uh, you know, we received the ball, our offense, really started to jail. We went back to our original game plan and uh, the quarterback started playing with confidence. You can see here we sprint out and Tony made an excellent decision throwing to, to uh, Alonzo and now we go back to running our draw and our backs are running hard. And, uh, so we just went really back to the basics and said, hey, you know, let's take a gut check, see where we are. Uh, we started going from the line of scrimmage. We made a good route read here in cover two and uh, got the ball to Willie Grissom here. He makes a nice cut, gets us down to the two-yard line. Uh, and now we're starting to play. There's some momentum on the sideline. Our sideline is getting into it. Uh, Tony makes a good read from the safety. Uh, we, we, we make a catch. You know, in this ball game, we end up dropping really five key balls, and this is one of the plays you see that uh, Willie did, did catch. Willie Grissom had a pretty decent ball game for a freshman, but we need other people to step up. Well, Willie Grissom is one of those freshman wide receivers that we're really looking to for big things, and and uh, right there, a 38-yard pass play to Willie sets up this uh, oh, he, touchdown yeah, run by Tony Jones. He sets up a touchdown run. This is an option play that we run on the goal line now and then. And, Tony made a good read as a, as a two-yard run for a touchdown, but uh, that provided a lot of excitement for the football team. And now we're playing with a lot of zeal, with a, a lot of enthusiasm. The defense goes back out, uh, and uh, it really goes three and out after the first series. Now we were starting to make tackles for the first half. We didn't make plays. We're starting to tip the ball. We're round receivers. For the first half, we wasn't like that. And, you know, you got to play with emotion in this game of football. You understand it. Guys are coming up here. You'll see Lewis Adams. That's a great open field tackle. Well, we didn't do that the first half. The second half, we come back here. We're in position. 
quarterback draw here. This quarterback happens to run on the sideline. He happened to get in front of me. I didn't want to take him down that hard, <laughs> but, but it happens. <laughs> you had it right in the middle of the game. You had to give a demonstration on how proper form tackling is done. I think we're going to see a replay of it right here, too, in a second. <laughs> you know, uh, I happen to play linebacker here in college, but this is a good scrum on their part. But Billy Stone's got to make that tackle. This is a third down critical play where uh, it's three and out, and again, he gets pushed on well, the side. Good job of wrapping him up. I had to wrap him up and form him up, and then he went out. I'm, I'm hoping that he's okay. Right? <clears throat> but, but our defense really started to pick it up. Javon is playing good technique here. We're flying to the ball. And uh, this is the type of enthusiasm that we need throughout the ball game. It's just not a, a one half. He, here's a great, this is Lewis. Lewis Adams made more plays in the, in the second half than he did in the first half. He's got to show up all the time like that. This is a great read by uh, Low Green. Uh, this is the same play through the first half, but we didn't have people breaking up on the football. Well, it was much improved linebacker performance in the second half. We did notice now, once again, Sexton back to pass. But again, what you see there is, is, a, is a missed tackle. We we had about, I want to say, 27 missed tackles in this ballgame, which really hurt us uh, and probably giving up probably, I want to say, 21, 21 points. But Wyoming um, with the first down here and goal. The defense first does goal, stiff good coverage right. by RW. That, that's the one thing that uh, if there's any positive thing on the goal line, I thought our kids played pretty well keeping them out or forcing them to a fourth down situation. And it's, that's a good rallying point. But we, you know, we, we can't let them get down there. And we gave up three points. Second half, we played much better. I think we gave up 10 points and scored 25. Uh, but we got to learn to play two halves here. Again, our offense is playing well here. Tony makes a nice read and gives it to Andre Richardson, uh, which is a nice pass and catch from Tony and, and the receiver. Uh, but our offense is, re is really starting to jail now. And the passing game has opened up our running game. Great coach. Uh, cut by, this is Andre Richardson, uh, off tackle G play we call it. And, but those are the types of plays that were not enforced the first half that uh, we have to learn to do all the time. Well, this is the nice same football cutback team. downfield here, that's right. And pretty good blocking at the line of scrimmage this year. Good series. blocking at the point of attack, but we're, we're, we're playing with a whole different type of mentality the second half in which we've got to do for the whole ball game. Seemed to be a lot more confidence coming out in the second half. Was it just a little bit of that uh, because the early start were the guys just not focused there at kickoff? Well, you know, I wish I could really tell you what it was. That's a possibility, but a lot has to do with, you know, when you're on the road, you got to get ready to play early and uh, you got to execute early. We start, we talked about starting fast and making plays. Uh, and, and you see, he, we didn't really start doing that un until the second half of this ball game. This is Andre. This is really uh, uh, Terrence. The kids are running hard. We get back in the goal line situation. We come back with our option play. Uh, we go down and score. Uh, we had two quick drives that second half, and, and uh, really, I'm proud of our kids. Our kids did not just fold the whole tent. They, they picked it up. Uh, well, go ahead. Good job pounding away. It seemed like once you got inside the goal line there, and this goal line, uh, goal line red zone offense, I guess, and then Tony Jones for a second touchdown of the afternoon, taking it in on the option keeper. Right and back, defensively, a Come big back, play here. Table create LeBlanc, a turnover, creating the table, uh, a strip. Uh, I think that was Kevin Williams, Kevin Williams that, that's right. that uh, got the fumble. But, you know, we talked about creating turnovers and coming over with turnovers when you tip a ball here. But well, this is a good job of uh, stripping the ball by Tabor. We shouldn't have let him inside. But, you know, we've had balls where we've been around, around for balls and we hadn't gotten them. But I'm very happy to see it come up with a turn. Give the ball back to the offense. Now what we start to do is move the football again. There's a lot of enthusiasm. We're playing with a lot more confidence. As you can see, the backs are running harder. And that's what happens when an offense and a defense play together. This is a good cut by, I think that's David. Mm -hmm. Good play by David yeah. Thompson right there. An unfortunate call right here for, for us with a, uh, a potential scoring drive right there, but Alonzo May is uh, unable to make the catch. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, and I went and talked to the official about it, and he said that the ball was uncatchable. I thought it was catchable. Well, when you knock him down, it usually is uncatchable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. OLSU does uh, settle for the three-pointer. Yeah, lost the did a nice job, ball. but, again, we come back. But our whole defense is playing like we've done the last couple of weeks with a lot of enthusiasm. We've got a lot of guys around the ball. We're running. We're looking for guys. This is a nice interception by Kevin. But he's in the right position. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, this is a good run back by Kevin. Uh, but that's the kind of defense that you got to play for four quarters, just not just not one half. Of Kevin Williams had an awful good second half, recovered the one fumble earlier, setting up the uh, the field goal drive, and then right here, as you said, being in great position, making the interception, and then showing a little bit of the 
I guess potential tailback yeah, abilities yeah, I mean, with this run back down. That's field. a good athletic move. We we tell our guys when you intercept the ball, we really want you to try to get to the sideline. Now, what I don't like that he's doing is that he's switching that ball back and forth, which that's a potential fumble uh, if he does that. But we get our offense back on track, get 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 them the ball back, and uh, and here you see Tony. Uh, this Craig is a good Strickland call. For quarterbacks at this point. No, I think that's still is that Tony or Greg. I think we've got Craig back in at the, or Craig is in at this point, and uh, yeah, yeah there's mm -hmm. Craig. That's a nice throw, and, and the fact that uh, the official called on this is our, our Tar Heel play. And uh, again, when you call that play, we expect to get 15 or 20 yards. But I think this is uh, Sean Love. Sh uh, yeah, Sean Love. Well, just put it away. Don't squat. Just you know, he's trying to dance. Get as much yardage as you can. But it's good that he did catch the ball and get upfield. Uh, I thought Strickland made some uh, some good reads here. This is a nice cut, nice run uh, by, uh, by Dave Bailey Thompson. And again, we're about to uh, go in again here. This is where he got hurt, uh, but uh, that was a, a throw to uh, Travis Hartfield. And again, the injury that he got here is just on his ankles, but we expect him to come back. Uh, is it, was it just a sprained ankle? Does it look very serious ankle. at this point? No. Okay. He's got to toughen it up and come back, but this is a nice throw by Tony. Things that he can do, sprint out, throw a flat and curl hill, get, get his back in a scoring position. Good aggressive run here by, by David. And glad they called him down here. And just a simple quarterback to get us on the board again. Well, Tony Jones had a, had a big game running the football with uh, three offensive touchdowns, then coming right back here with this uh, two-point conversion on the QB draw. Did a nice job. We wanted to try to set ourselves up. At this point in the game, is, is, is really uh, uh, sealed away on their part. You see me... Uh, at least you're limping a little uh, bit. Well, I, what I'm trying to do is walk off the field. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was in a position where I think I caught a helmet on, on the sideline, but I'm tough. I'm going to bounce back. <laughs> <laughs> Got to set a good example for the players. Example. Playing in pain, that's right. <laughs> well, after the break, we'll be back, and Tom Dorado will give us a run-through on an important division of NCAA football these days, the Athletic Compliance Office. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, the past 10 years has been an evident change in college football, and if anybody should have learned the lesson, it's been us affiliated with Oklahoma State University. The effects of probation can just be devastating to programs. Well, this week, Tom Dorado is going to take a look at Bob Burton and give us a step-by-step -step look through Oklahoma State University's Athletic Compliance Office. His title is relatively short and to the point. Athletic Compliance Coordinator. His name is Bob Burton, and not widely known outside the athletic department, he is indeed a key staff member here at Oklahoma State. Well, Bob, it appears most athletic departments around the country have someone like yourself to oversee the X's and O's of compliance. At this time, I'd say every NCAA member institution does have a compliance coordinator. Uh, that person sometimes performs other functions, but I would say the top 60 Division I institutions have an individual who performs that job. as a, That's their full-time responsibility. You work with every coach within the department. That's a lot of meetings throughout the year. Well, one of the things that I implemented when I came to Oklahoma State is I wanted to make sure that the coaches had all the educational materials that were coming out of the NCAA. We currently have in place mandatory coaches meetings and we have those on a monthly basis. I do try to meet with the coaches on a, every day. I walk around and make sure that they, they have any interpretive questions that they need to have answered. I make sure that I get those answers to them and I make sure that the answers they get are uh, within NCAA rules and regulations. That NCAA manual that you refer to so many times throughout each day it has an intimidating look, but you don't look at it that way. Well, the, uh, the manual itself has really evolved into a, uh, uh, what I would say a manual that's uh, user-friendly. Uh, the recruiting section is what the coaches deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and I try to make sure that if uh, we're in an area of eligibility or amateurism, playing and practice season, is that I try to get that information to them so that they don't have to spend their time diving into those bylaws. But I do like them to spend a lot of time on the recruiting bylaws, which is a small portion of the manual. Would you describe your job as preventative in nature? It is to some degree. Uh, we definitely want to make sure that we don't run afoul of any NCAA rules. Uh, what we're trying to do now is actively educate not only the coaches, but the student athletes, administrators, so that uh, we're acting rather, rather than reacting. Uh, right now, we have a staff that I feel very comfortable with. 
Uh, Bob Simmons' staff is a, is a group of individuals who are very intelligent, that have a lot of college uh, coaching experience, and that know the NCAA rules uh, and have been at institutions that have had a great deal of success and stayed within the rules and regulations of the NCAA. Bob, OSU was recently certified by the NCAA. Explain what that means. Well, the NCAA uh, has taken uh, what's called the NCAA certification and uh, they send a peer review team onto the member institution school and they review what we currently have in place in four areas. Academic integrity, fiscal integrity, uh, government to, uh, government to rules compliance, and uh, student athlete welfare. And that peer review team came in and and reviewed what we currently have in place in regard to those four areas and found that we were in compliance and uh, compliance without any conditions. It's basically telling the rest of the nation that OSU has, has made tremendous progress in those four areas. It's something that we should be very proud of. We need to continue to strive towards commitment to NCAA rules uh, compliance and carry us on into the Big 12 where we can be very competitive. Right now, I feel that we're headed in the right direction. We're going to be a very strong contender in the Big 12. You know, Paul, uh, Bob Burden is an excellent compliant officer. I've got a chance to work with several guys in this profession, but uh, he's a guy who has great integrity, he knows all the rules, and he works well with our staff. In a moment, we'll take a look at this week's Cowboy Honor Roll, as well as the upcoming contest versus the Tennessee Volunteers. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to the Bob Simmons Show. Well, each and every week after the coaches get a chance to get back settled in and review the game films, they select what they call their Cowboy Coaches Honor Roll. And coach this week for the Wyoming football game, yeah, I tell you, this week we didn't have many honors depending on the game <laughs> we played, but uh, we just thought Josh Henson, an offensive lineman, it really blocked well at the point of attack, and uh, we asked him to do a lot in terms of uh, pulling, being a pulling guard and, and uh, protection. Uh, so we thought Josh Henson was, did an excellent job for us. Uh, our special teams players is Jeff uh, Grinray, and we thought that he did a great job both on uh, a kickoff return and on the punt. He did a nice job of being involved in about three tackles and did a nice job of blocking at the point of attack. Uh, our rookie, uh, guys are really get us ready to work in the trenches is uh, Adam Davis. Adam Davis is a six foot five, a young freshman who we think is going to be a special player. He's one of those guys that we're trying to red shirt and uh, we look for him to do a lot for us. Uh, our scout team player of the year, of, uh, of the year not of the year, of the uh, of <laughs> week here yeah, is Tim McNeil. Tim McNeil. <laughs> Uh, really uh, was a start, played some for us last year. We asked him to go down on the uh, scout team, and he did a good job of really getting the uh, secondary ready for pass routes. Well, there's uh, an old adage, I guess, that says out of the frying pan, into the fire. This mm -hmm. week, a tough road trip to Wyoming in a 30,000 seat stadium. Now next week, the upcoming week, we've got the Tennessee Volunteers, and they just play in a little place. I think Nayland Stadium only holds about 92,000. 92, yeah, 92, 91,000, but either way, it feels like 100,000 when you play in that particular stadium. Uh, Tennessee is probably one of the classiest programs in the country in terms of talent, very similar to Nebraska. Uh, in terms of the people that, that we're going to face, it has uh, Coach Fulmer. Uh, the head football coach there has done a great job since taking over for Coach Majors, and he's done a great job recruiting. You see here Peyton Manning. Who uh, his father is Archie? He's he's a great leader for uh, I think he's a sophomore, uh, and he's made great things happen here on defense. Uh, they got a lot of defensive players here. Uh, number 28 uh, picks the ball up, but uh, their their offensive line, let me just say, it will be very similar to Nebraska in terms of size, strength, and speed. Uh, it's a, it's an excellent program, and uh, it's it's indeed a great challenge for us to, to go away from home and have to play a, a team like Tennessee. Well, Peyton Manning's truly a remarkable, a remarkable young man. Uh, last year, Tennessee was going through a little bit of a transition period, trying to find a starting quarterback. Peyton, on limited playing time, threw for almost 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns as a true freshman while completing over 60% of his passes. Well, this year, he's even better. It, it's, it's in the genes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, part of his, his father was a, was a great player in his own right, and I got a chance to see Peyton Manning as a junior, and he was big and strong and come from a good uh, football system and uh, he's he's just taken the, the off their offense and really put it on the map and uh, he's a, a, a sophomore that's going to be hard to deal with. 
How are the freshmen progressing? I know Willie uh, Grissom, Sean Love had good games. Are they coming along as quickly as you'd hoped? Well, uh, they're still learning. Uh, I hate to say that, but, uh, you know, I, uh, Willie did have a good game, and uh, Sean is, is still making a little bit of mistakes, and uh, R.W. McCorders is really playing a lot for us, and uh, those freshmen are really learning at this point in time. Well, folks, we appreciate you being a part of our program, and that does wrap up this week's edition of the Bob Simmons Show. Please be, be excuse me, please be back with us next week <laughs> as Oklahoma State travels to Knoxville to take on those tough Tennessee Volunteers. Good night, everybody.